Hi, I'm Micah Bell, and this is Deliverance Talk. I've been in this ministry now for over 38 years, and I've seen a lot of things happen, especially when demons leave people, and all the people I've ever ministered to, as far as I could tell, and as far as their confession was concerned, they were Christians. They were not just Christians, but they were spirit-filled Christians, people that had opened their heart up as much as they could to the Lord and asked the Holy Spirit to come in to the point that they could speak in tongues and they could prophesy just like in the books of, book of Acts. Recently, I was in France. I was invited to come there and minister and teach about deliverance to a group of people up in the French Alps. What a wonderful trip. But I no longer landed in Geneva and drove uh, an hour or so to a brother's house. And there was a younger brother uh, wanting to debate with me the fact that no, no Christians can, can't have demons. And I, when, when I run onto this, I realize, you know, well, brother, I love you, but uh, I'll, you pray and ask the Lord to show you. So I want to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, how, how deception gets around? How do lies get so far around the world? Because this is really a deceptive lie. But anyway. So I want to take you to the book of Matthew, the, the 10th chapter, where it says these, uh, the, these 12 Jesus sent out and commanded them saying. He had chosen his disciples, his 12. So he he sent them out and he commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles and do not enter a city of the Samaritans. In other words, don't go someplace where they are not my people, my sheep. I guess we could say today, don't go to non-Christians with this. Isn't that amazing? But that's what he commanded. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Well, were they lost or not? Well, if they were his sheep, how could they be lost? So these were chosen people, just like Christians today were chosen. We've been lost sheep and then been found by the Holy Spirit, but we'll not far talk further about that. And he says, as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's here. It's not way off somewhere in the sky. It's here. Now, how do we know? He says, and as you go preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand, he says, first of all, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely you receive, freely give. What are you saying? Well, if they freely receive something, they've received healing, they've received deliverance, the casting out of demons. And he says, it's essential that you do that for my people, cast demons out of them, and show them that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, what, what's that all about? Well, Jesus also says uh, that if I, by the finger of God, cast out demons, then surely the kingdoms come to you. So the evidence uh, of, the, of the conflict that Jesus brought in the heavenlies and in the spirit realm was that he came confronting those spirits that were in his people, casting them out so they could be free. Surely the kingdom has come upon you. How? By me casting demons out of you. Seems so simple to me. Maybe not to you. So before the kingdom can come, there must be a removal. Like the giants of, of Canaan. Remember? They were to go into the land. God had given them the land. Just like he's given us our land. The land of our soul. Our mind, will, emotions. He's given them to us. But there's something there that keeps us from being all that he wants us to be and all that we want to be. And so like the giants in Canaan, we have unclean spirits, demons within us that we must run out so the kingdom can come and he can be Lord in our life. Can a Christian be possessed? Well, that's a big question too that comes up. It came up in France. Well, no, not completely. He's bought with a price by the blood of Jesus. But we all know that sometimes, especially in our early walk with the Lord, there are areas of our life where we're literally possessed. We don't have control. We, we lose control. We don't have control over the lust sometimes. We don't have control over the anger. We don't have control over fear. These things that control us that are 
the, that are caused by demons. And so uh, can a Christian be possessed? Certainly in some areas, but not completely. He's bought with a price. So don't misunderstand that. But we certainly can be demonized, as the New Testament says. So when we come to the Lord, if we're really truly after the Lord, there will be conflict. Because we're, we're talking about two kingdoms. We're talking about the kingdom of Satan and, and the prince of the power of the air and all the rulership that he's had over us and over the world and the kingdom of God coming. And it's not going to come without conflict, not only in the world, but inside us. So we are offered armor and a weapon where Paul says, put on the whole armor of God. So it's an option. You're going to put it on or not. And we could talk more about that and probably will. But we're given one weapon, a sword. The rest is defensive. The sword is offensive. What's that mean? The sword is the word of God, the word of God that comes out of our mouth where we speak like Jesus spoke to Satan when he was tempted. You know, get thee behind me, he said, even to Satan as he spoke through Peter. So why deliverance? <laughs> well, the fifth column within that keeps us from being completed. Jesus said, be perfect, even as my Father in heaven is perfect. What? You can, nobody's perfect, but we're commanded to be perfect, are we not? So the fruit of the manifestation of demons within makes us unclean. The, the lust, the anger, the bitterness, the covetousness, the fear. Fear, the Lord hates fear. Fear disqualifies people even from the city of God in the book of Revelation. We've got to be free of fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear. And so how do we get free of it? What is it? What's the source of it? Why deliverance? Huh. We cast out fear. Perfect love cast it out, it says. But do we, how do we get perfect love if we still got lust and we still got these things? You see what I'm saying? So it, the demons keep us from producing the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, patience, self-control. These things are what God's looking for in our garden. And so we now got to get free of those things that keep us from doing that. That's what deliverance is about. From being able to forgive and love one another. That's why deliverance, because uh, we, we know we're not perfected in love sometimes. And, and even with our own family, especially with the family of God. So it's about love. And with, without love, there is no kingdom. The kingdom of God is love. This is my commandment, that you love one another, and they'll know you're my disciples by your love. So what do I need to do to get rid of these things that keep me from loving? Even my own spouse or my own children or our own, my own parents are especially the body of Christ, the people in the body of Christ. So I ask you a question. Do you really know the truth about yourself? Are you really willing to sit down and let the secret of your heart be revealed, as it says prophecy is in there in 1 Corinthians 14? Are you willing for your book to be unsealed and to get free of all the inner <laughs> cancerous, uh, unclean things in your heart and in your mind and so forth until you're free to be all that God has called you to be and wants you to be? The Word says you'll know the truth. And the truth will make you free. And that truth is a reality of what's in me. But the good news is Jesus came to set us free. He came giving us the authority over all the power of the enemy to cast these things out. He never sent his disciples out without telling them, cast out demons. And so they did. They cast out many demons, it said. And they came back rejoicing. The big question is, are you Christ-like? They call us Christians, but are we Christ-like? And I guarantee you, with the ministry that the Lord has provided for us, you can be. And you can have peace. You can have love. You can know joy and all these good fruits of the Spirit. And that's what deliverance is all about. This is Deliverance Talk. 
I'm Micah Bell. God bless you.